on Salvage Hunters. It's a very, very fashionable city. That's why we're here. Drew and T are heading to the heart of Europe, former East Germany. As you can see, I brought you to my coffee shop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drew discovers some early modern gems. That one, you're going to have to pull out of my cold, dead hands, <laughs> I think. Just, just has it all, doesn't it? Got to have that. Right, where are they going to go? They brave the cold of an early morning in Leipzig. I'm glad we got an early shot. On the hunt for quirky design classics. Perfect working order. All in the timing. <laughs> It makes it all worth getting out of bed for. And Drew finds a world-class treasure. I was transfixed. I couldn't take my eyes off it. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Whoa, this is great. What a wonderful house. He's on a hunt for weird and wonderful objects. I'm like that. Oh, it's a stonker, and it's really beautiful. It's a brilliant piece of engineering. In his search for treasure... Wow, it's hot in here. Oh, now you're talking. He bargains hard. 200 quid. I've got to ask. And there's nothing he won't buy. Sold. With help from Rebecca... The money's in that one. Absolutely. Well, I never. And a team of renovators... You can see some gold. He transforms thousands of items, from junk to gems. Famed as one of the birthplaces of modernism in art, architecture and design, Germany is a popular destination for visitors and antique dealers alike. Drew and T have travelled over 900 miles, starting in Berlin, to hunt for design classics. That is pretty damn impressive. It was here that the renowned Bauhaus School came to revolutionise architecture and design in the early 20th century, by combining craftsmanship with technology to produce a sleek modernist style. So what would be your ideal German find, then? What would be the best? Ideal German find would be an original piece of Bauhaus furniture. The boys' first stop is the capital, Berlin, with its uniquely divided history. Completed in 1791, the Brandenburg Gate became a symbol of the Cold War, when the gate was placed in its own exclusion zone and could not be accessed by either East or West Germans. When the wall was finally torn down in 1989, this famous landmark became the icon of a reunited Berlin. So this was East Germany, this yep. and West then Germany down, West, that was the dividing yeah. line, wasn't it? It's, it's pretty impressive. It is. It's no marble arch, <laughs> just saying, just throwing that out there. I think it's over 200 years old. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, for sure. It's very, very clean. I just think so, how simple it is for us to walk through that gate. Yeah. And how, how, how people died trying to get through it, didn't they? I know. It's quite a symbol. I'm excited. Germany's great. It's got a lot of the things I like. Old German cars, uh -huh. hot dogs. Worst. <laughs> if it's the best of times, it was the worst, worst of times. Worst of times. <laughs> Drew is starting his hunt for German gems at a design fair in the capital that's reopening for the first time in three years. So what's this you brought me to, then? This is the Berlin Design Fair. This is the preview night, dealers only. OK. Eames, plenty of Eames. What's the plural of Eames? Is it Eames? Eames is. Eames, is. Eames e I. Straight away, good stuff. Love those chairs. They're good. This is how to do an antique fair. It's nice. Loads of space. I like this guy's stuff. That's nice. I like that. It's good, isn't it? I want to get that early 1920s into the 30s, Bauhaus aesthetic. That's what I'm always banging on about, and I'm determined to buy some of that today. Is the Bauhaus? He's got good on the way in. He's got this guy's got really nice things. Hello, hi. This is great. This desk, nice. It's a Schreibmaschine machine dish. Typewriter table. I, I'm living in Prague, and, uh, and most of the things are from Czechoslovakia. I like it. I think it was made after Marcel Breuer, but in, yeah. uh, in Czechoslovakia in the 30s. Marcel Breuer was one of the luminaries of the Bauhaus movement. It was a design period that threw everything out of the pram and started again. And they did it exactly right, and also with this wonderful German Teutonic brilliance. They copied Breuer's stuff forever, I and mean, you got Marcel Breuer there as well, there, yeah, there. Nice. People now will look at stuff from the 70s and go, wow, isn't that interesting, isn't that modern, did it? You go, 
It was done in the 20s by some young kids in a school in Dessau. Check avant-garde uh, lights. It's this one. This one here attracts me the most. This worn, this worn this out one. one. Yeah. yeah. It's 1932, this one here. Yeah. This is deep in this design period. So 32, which is a really important year. That I like. How much? How much? Uh, 800. There's one diminutive nickel-plated lamp. It's got this wonderful ratcheted ball fitting to the arm that locks just right. The wear on it's just right. The color's just right. The size is just right. Highly original. Got to have that. This nickel-plated desk lamp was made by Yaroslav Anish at IAS Design in Prague. As with so many designers at this time, Anish's form was heavily inspired by the Bauhaus movement. Dating to 1932, this desk lamp is completely unrestored and could be worth around 850 pounds. That's so, is that one? This is German, from East Germany in mid-century. Mid it's a little bit looking after Bauhaus, after Tümpel um, light. That's different, that's, that's got a real look to it. It's a beautiful light. Yeah. I love it. How much is that one? 300. 300. This 1950s desk lamp was designed by Oskar Immerschied in the East German town of Dessau, where the Bauhaus school was based between 1925 and 1930. It could be worth around 400 pounds. If I take this one and this one, what can you do if I take both? 800, 300, together nine. Yeah, deal. I'll take them. They're great. That one, you're going to have to pull out of my cold, dead hands, <laughs> I think. This just has it all, doesn't it? Just has everything. You can't walk past a cake without sticking your finger on the icing every now and again, can you? And that's what that's like. I have to have it. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, mate. There you go. Well, that's made the day. Another stall just grabs me. First thing I see is a painting at the back there which I have to own. I just instantly fell in love with it. Actually, I'm, I'm in chairs, but I can't tell you anything about it. I don't think there is anything to know, <laughs> you know? I just think you have to know that it's a cool painting. For me, it's the chair, because the chair tells stories. Yes, I'm obsessed with chairs. Really? He nice. likes sitting down. <laughs> so, what age is this one? It's uh, 30, 30, 31. It's beautiful and it's very comfortable. I was going to say, can I sit in it? But before I sit in it, how much is it? It's not so expensive. It's 1,500 euros. A little expensive. Then we start looking at the chairs. Now, there's one that jumps out at me straight away. So it's classic Brewer, really original. A bit scruffy. Nickels coming off, covers a bit worn. But I tell you what, highly original. This is untouched. The design of this chair is heavily influenced by Marcel Breuer's B35 chair, which was made in the late 1920s. Breuer was in charge of the Bauhaus cabinet-making workshop. In 1925, inspired by the lightness and strength of his bicycle, he started making furniture from tubular steel. His first experimental armchair was designed to combine art and industry and was named the Vasily chair, after his friend the artist Vasily Kandinsky, who particularly admired it. Designed by Anton Lorenz, this padded chrome and wood chair was made around 1929 and sold in the UK. It could be worth around £1,500. That design is incredibly pure to Brewer's design. It isn't him, but as soon as he was designing it, they were copying it with exactly the same aesthetic. They've looked at it and go, I like that, make it. It's that purity that you're after. That's too much. Yeah, but it's unique. What's the manufacture date? I'd need to pin it down to a year. It is about 29, 30. So I'm interested, but I need a, a bit of a deal. Uh, Christian, we have to negotiate a price because he's the finance minister. I'm passionate. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the financial things. This, I like, I'd like to buy this and this, but I need a deal. I need a better deal. One five together. 
14. Drew and T are visiting the east of Germany and have arrived early at a Berlin design fair. This is how to do an antique fair, it's it nice, is, yeah, comfortable. It's good. Drew's trying to get a deal on a classic Bauhaus period chair and a painting. I'd like to buy this and this, but I need a deal. One five together. 1,400. 1,400. Deal, sold. Boom. We've just done very well. We've just bought a real piece that's got so much heart and soul in it. It's just such a pure aesthetic. So I should be now, that's the first time I spotted that. Oh, yeah, it's cool. So, Berlin Design Festival, brilliant. Small but perfectly formed. And I bought some great things, just great things. The painting and the chair, I mean, oh, fabulous. The little nickel-plated lamp, amazing. All of it I'd have at home. And you know what? If you mix it all up with a load of 17th century stuff, it'll work. Good design always shines through. To travel deeper into Germany's eastern states, T has organized some classic wheels. Now, as you know, on our foreign journeys, I get us a lovely handy vehicle. So you've got us this. I this like lovely it. Vehicle, I like it. it. I can foresee a few problems, but uh, mm -hmm. it's got, you know, it's got well, a lot going for it. Not that one. That nice one. one. Now you're talking. I know you like yes. a beetle. Mid to late 70s Carmen Cabriolet bug. Is it okay? It's better than okay, T. This is a dream being fulfilled. Is I've it? always wanted to drive an old Beetle down the Autobahn in Germany. So this is great. Excellent. You've done well. So I started in a Beetle using my old 67. Well, it didn't start really, well, did it? No, we I pushed know. it. It's great. The boys are having a last look around Berlin before heading south, deep into the federal state of Saxony. Driving around Germany in an old Volkswagen, it's a dream come true. So I know it sounds crazy, but it really is. I've, all, I've wanted to do this since the 80s. Is that you making that noise on the car? I've got a small squirrel trapped in the dashboard. <laughs> and is he's, that, uh, is that why we're getting so much power? What, no, he's rowing. Uh, that's, his, that's his knees. Firing on one squirrel. It's <laughs> They're travelling 170 miles south to an antiques business that's been running since this area was deep in communist East Germany. So we are now off to see a guy called Ralph Geiser. Uh -huh. And he's got a very, very large and very busy antiques business. Now, he is right on the Czech border, and he started making money and buying and selling stuff in the, I think, the late 70s. He's a, he's a, and he's a bit of a punk. Him and his mates used to find things and sell them to people in the West from behind the wall. It's quite remarkable. And we're looking at it as exciting. It might be dark days for him. They're heading to Grünheinichen, a small village in the Ore Mountains, which had been mined almost continuously for the last 800 years. In the late 15th, early 16th century, this was the most important source of silver ore in the whole of Europe. More recently, the area has become known for its wood carving, particularly the production of traditional wooden toys and Christmas decorations. The 500-year-old Rochhaus Müller used to be a mill and was then turned into workers' flats deep in the old Communist German Democratic Republic, or GDR. Today, it's run as an antique superstore by Ralph Geisler. Hochhaus Müller is my, my house since uh, 1997, and we buy uh, this house uh, as ruin. Antique things in GDR, uh, you can sell this uh, for Westmark for dollars, and if you have this in GDR, you are the king. I made this since 1984. In GDR, we have uh, this made uh, not so legal, huh? but it was uh, a good business for, for us. Huh? Hello. 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 Welcome. Yes, Thank you. come in, please. Huh? Uh, Do you have any English? My English is very bad, very, very bad. It's already much. better than my German, yes. <laughs> so how long have you been here on this site? I've been like here really since years. 1997, but okay. I have my business since 1993. Same as me. Before I do it, uh, 10 years black. 
All right, <laughs> off the books. In East Germany. Ah. Ah, ah. ah OK. <laughs> yes. So, and here's my uh, ah. uh, shop for our mountain traditional things. Uh, ah. We are a Christmas land. Today we are at Rockhouse Muller with Ralph. And he's got this enormous expanse of buildings, and he does architectural salvage, pine furniture, and an awful lot of Christmas. It's unusual, but there's so much stuff. All in all, we've got all the right ingredients for a good day. It's great fun. I can see why people come here at Christmas with the kids. They must love it. Do you have glue vine and stuff like that? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and this is uh, the last floor. Here are my, wow. my, my private museum. Huh? Very old, all mountain things. It looks great. Yes. This is a, a pyramid from 1860. The cow up here. The cow is here from, from Grünheinischen. Can, can I see it? Something catches my eye, and it's the most wonderful carved bull. It's just got it all. It's very strange looking. It's bigger than normal. The paint on it's great. It's really decorative. Very, very saleable. How, how, how much is this? This is not... I think sometimes this, everything this, has a price. This is an um, original thing from my homeland. 500 euros? Give me a price. What's it worth? 1,500. Would this, you sell this, this for 1,200? No. Come on, give me a price. Ten thousand five hundred and thirty. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I give in. I give in. Ten. Yeah. <sighs> so how did you get started doing this then? Uh, on the villages, the people go and uh, give your old things paying back, and the people phone to me, please come and we have this and this. House huh? clearance, yeah, yeah. House it's clearance. fascinating yes, about Eastern yes. Germany yeah. when and you're just finding yes, things yeah. out and of the mud and yes. that's, okay. Yes. It's just interesting, yep. just very interesting mm -hmm. because to us, to us, you were just a closed society. You were a closed country, just yes, nothing yes, coming yes. in, nothing going yep. out. Uh -huh. Ralph, what about these? What are these? Birds from an old school, from, uh, from biology. Huh? Yeah. It's a uh, fly from 1930. Huh? I like them, they're really battered. Yeah. How much are they? Ten. Ten for one, please. Look how dirty that one is, poor thing. <laughs> Not only are they dead, and been stuffed and shot and whatever else has happened to them, they've then had a really hard life, and it's given them a certain something that I like. Eighty for all. And now, 90 for all. 90 euros? Yes. So then we start looking at the price, and they're cheap. They're really cheap. Cheap, cheap. We'll have the whole flock. <laughs> they're great. I like those. They're fun. <gasps> One, two, three. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Is that a seagull? And this is a 20, and we say 110, please. 110 euros. For okay. the flock. Great. Yes. Deal. They're teaching aids. They've got the little paper labels on them. We will sell them as a collection. They look a little bit lost and forgotten and uncared for. And that appeals. So, yeah. 110 euros, nine old birds. So, this is my storage. OK, well, let's Very get started. Yeah. Yes. When inside there, full of country pine furniture and zinc watering cans and planks and bits of this and bits of that and blanket boxes. Quite like this. Can we get it down? Yes. It's been painted very ornately. But it's got something, this sort of scumbly wash on it there that I like. Now, the top is heavily faded, almost worn to nothing, but I wet it and the colour comes back through. This 19th century rustic painted pine storage box in traditional or mountain style was made as a dowry chest and would have been filled with blankets and linens for the bride's new household. Once it's cleaned up, it could be worth around 350 pounds. 120. Okay. I think it would clean up okay. 120. <sighs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, 120. Good. I'm not going to bother arguing with you on that. No, it's fine. Okay, that's good. Let's see if we can find some more. Good. 
Ralph has got about 3,000 square metres on, on this site here of stuff. And trust me, he's filled every single bit of it. These pieces here, it's this one, okay. oof, mm. Mm. it's too much money. It's, oh. This one here, can we get it out and have a better look at it? In this area of Europe, they would put window grills and balconette panels and they'd use raw iron. It's unusual, it's different, it's odd, it's strange. It fits in with my sort of stock because it's nice, the paint's really well worn on it. It's 90% there. This wrought iron window grill was made in the secessionist style. At the end of the 19th century, various Central European artists, architects and designers broke away from traditional styles to start experimenting with a new radical modernity known as secessionism. Back in the UK and with minimal restoration, it could be worth around £600. How much can that be? 220 for you. 30 you can eat and drink. For £30? Yes. When's the last time you went out for a meal? For 30 quid, it's uh, not going to get you very far. We barely get four bags of chips in Britain. 200 For 220 I must uh, pay my... Uh, Expensive life, yeah? <laughs> my Ireland, my Mercedes. Speedboat. Women's. Women's. <sighs> yeah. That's expensive. Right. I feel sorry for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the star is the 20. That's how euros. much? That, is that yeah? 20 euros? This is uh, 200 and this is 20. Drew and T have travelled to Germany and are visiting dealer Ralf Geisler deep in the Ore Mountains. And here's my shop for Ore Mountain traditional things. And Drew's trying to get a deal on an unusual wrought iron window grill. How much can that be? 220 for you. This is uh, 200 and this is 20. Okay. <laughs> okay, for the story alone, I'll buy it. Ha! 220, Charming. thank you. We'll take it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I like Ralph and I really love his setup and I like his attitude towards it. He's a grafter. You know, he's one of us. And I, I really enjoy being around guys who like this. You know, he came from the Eastern Germany. He was finding stuff in the mud and making money out of it and shipping it, you know, out the back door without telling anybody and making money and he's come on to do this. It's incredible. Also for me was das ein großer Spaß gewesen. Ich glaube, wir sind beide so Herzblut. Menschen, was Antiquitäten betrifft, da haben wir viel gemeinsam, habe ich festgestellt. Ja, und er kann auch gerne mal wiederkommen. Bei uns ist das immer anders hier. Also wir haben immer neue alte Dinge. Ralph, thank you. Ben, yeah. Thank you. Much appreciated. And uh, we'll see you again. It was my pleasure. Yeah. No thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Ahoy. Ciao. That was good. Yeah. A lot of stuff. The little gate, that's good. All the dead birds. Have you ever been refused sale of a cow before? Yes. You, know, you have? Yes. No cows for you, sir. No, no. Stop squeaking. Have the squirrels got names? Uh, yeah, it's Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Yeah. Come on, Ferdinand. Come on, Ferdy. Ferdy Denant. Ferdy. Next on their East German adventure, the boys are heading 70 miles northwest to the city of Leipzig. It's a very, very fashionable city. It's like a hipster city, basically, this place. That's why we're here. Inspiring fashion sense. Absolutely no reason for us to be here if something's trendy. You know, see some of the old survived. Tracing its roots back a thousand years, Leipzig has always been an important cultural and commercial centre in Germany. Its book trading industry dates back 500 years, and Johann Sebastian Bach, widely considered one of the greatest composers of all time, was the music director here at St Thomas's Church for 27 years. Along with the rest of the city, the church was badly bombed in the Second World War and had to be extensively repaired. Drew and T are stopping off outside the restored church before going on to what is said to be one of the biggest antique markets in Europe. This is very pleasant. As you can see, I brought you to my coffee shop. Oh, yeah. Tea house? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm, that's very good. What are we looking for tomorrow? German industrial? Anything, really. It's not going to just be German stuff. There'll be stuff coming in from all of the surrounding countries. But, unfortunately, we do have to get up 
tomorrow morning at 2.30 a.m. I'm just having to think about that. I know. Might as well be there before anybody else. It costs nothing to get up early, apart from the, the pain of it, the sheer pain. But I'm looking forward to it. It's an antique fair I've never been to before and a very large one. And a beautiful place to come to, I'm to go to an antique fair. A beautiful place to have that cake smoker. Next morning, as planned, the boys are at the Agra Antique Market at 4 a.m. sharp. Right, where are they going to go? Follow the vans, I suppose. Follow the vans. Located just south of the city centre. This is big. This is really big. I'm glad we got an early shot. And held in a 12-acre trading estate, this monthly market has around 1,000 stalls. They're saying this is one of the biggest antique fairs in Europe. Didn't believe it till I got here. It's massive. And the pies of the most adventurously packed van. That's quite something. I think it's just a case of, just see if you get lucky. This is the sort of standard stuff you'll see at fairs everywhere at the moment. Same old, same old stuff. Hello. Okay. Vivia? Uh, 45 for one pieces. For one? Yeah. So 90, um, 80 euro? 80 euro. Uh, OK. I'd be interested to see the glass as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah I'll, take, I'll take these, yes? Yeah. What a fantastic pair of bedside lights we just bought. Art Nouveau into secessionism, untouched. They seem to be in great condition. 80 euros the pair. Happy days. You heal? 100. 100. Then I thought, hang on a second, this boy's quite good. What else has he got? Boom. Secessionist plant stand next to it, pure secessionist bedside cupboard, tall, hammered finish, really sort of brutal, really, in its manufacture. Where do you get it from? Which country? Um, Hungary? This is Hungary, Budapest. Budapest. 100, yes. Yes, okay. yes, we'll take that. It makes it all worth getting out of bed for. Just that, just that hit, that rush, you know, that, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, now just go and get the next one. Can't wait. Brilliant. Fantastic. Do you know what? This is still the most fun I ever have in my day, really? is doing this. I do quite like that, and this one here as well. Look at that little thing. Where did you England? Uh, Wales. Gales. No. Yeah. OK, it's not better. Yeah. <laughs> They're more expensive now. It's complete. 50. Complete. 50. I mean, they're not rare, rare ones, these at all, but the condition's good. There's a very small wall hanging light, which you can change. It's just directional. That's in beautiful condition. And then the other desk lamp articulated. That again, that's in beautiful condition. I think we'll have that. I think we'll have that and that one. So, how much both of you? 100. 120. Yeah, OK, 120? 120. 120, yes. 120 euros for the pair. Like, yeah. <laughs> Put it back. Like this. Do you know what that is? This uh, is a cylinder from a revolving... It's a Wankel rotary engine. It's a brilliant piece of engineering. I love cars, I love engineering, I love engines. So it appeals to all of my senses. It's just cool looking, you know, and who doesn't want a Wankel engine in their life? German engineer Felix Wankel invented the rotary engine in 1954. A powerful, yet small and lightweight engine it was first used commercially in the NSU Spider. Because it is more complex than the conventional engine and has a higher fuel consumption, the Wankel engine had a relatively short life and is now no longer commonly produced. This model would have been used to show engineering students how the Wankel engine worked. It could be worth around 200 pounds. Works as well, it's perfect working order. It's all in the timing. <laughs> 150. 150. 
Yeah. It's not bad, actually. 100? One. And die. Oh. One, three, oh, OK. Yes. Yeah, we'll take it, yeah. That's great. This teaching aid is a good size. It's got the maker's mark on it, all the colour's still there, and it works perfectly. Boom. I'll definitely make 50, 60 quid on it. Inside, there are two 5,000 square metre halls packed with hundreds of stalls. This thing, can we, can I take it out? Yeah, yeah. Is it a death mask? No. What is it? It's theatre. Theatre? Yes. It's early 20th century. Yeah. Japanese? Yeah, Japanese. Is he a particular character or just...? Yes, it's the old man. The old man. Yeah. That's quite apt, isn't it? it? Is. Yeah, yeah. Close to, yeah. I think it's really rather beautiful. It's extremely fine made. I think it's really rather... Let me try it on. It's very small, isn't it? Won't fit over my face. Ah! It's a beautiful old man. Oh, yes. <laughs> Those three if words are never you, said around us. <laughs> thought we'd done for the day, and just this thing just hits me. It's like, wow, look at that. Never seen one before. I was transfixed, I couldn't take my eyes off it. As soon as I saw it, I thought, wow, I've got to have that. It really is just a wonderful piece of art. Emerging in the 14th century, Japanese no is one of the oldest existing theatre traditions in the world. This old man character is known as Kojo. The mask personifies dignity and divinity, anticipating the old man's later appearance in the No plays as a god. It could be worth around £1,000. I really like it. You're asking 380, what can you do? 350. 350. Drew and T are on a buying trip to Eastern Germany. <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> at the end of a long day at a 12-acre flea market in Leipzig, Drew's come across a rare Japanese theatre mask. I really like it. You're asking 380. What can you do? 350. 350. That's I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to buy him. I think he's wonderful. 380 wanted. Bought for 350. Well, there's a mountain. There's a way for that to go with a better mount on it. It's a wonderful thing. Love it. Thank you very much. That's buy of the day. That's that 1%. That's that magic. And this, this proves my own point right, which is, you know, we're finished for the day. We've been here hours and hours and hours, ready to go home. Bang. Right there in front of you. Leipzig market, massive, very early in the morning. We've done all right. We've made money. We've made a couple of contacts, we've bought some interesting things. We've gone from secessionist lighting and furniture through to teaching aids for engines to Japanese art. Fine, it's been worth it. And I've done another market I've not done before. Can I go back to bed now? After a good sleep, the boys are back on the road to their final destination just 25 miles outside Leipzig. Today, T, we are off to meet a guy called Martin, and he owns a schloss. It's full of stuff to sell, so I am very excited about this one. Uh, he is one of the three largest print dealers in Germany. The good news is the schloss is not in good nick. Uh, it's knackered. If he gets a bad builder in, he could have a botch and slosh and... Slosh and botch, aren't they those expensive stereos? <laughs> They're heading to Bad Lausick, an ancient town with roots that go back to the 11th century. The town became a popular health resort in the 19th century after a hot spring was discovered during coal mining operations. Located a few kilometres to the west, the 1,000 square metre stately home, Schloss Boyka, was built around 1810 by Heinrich von Niebecker. After 1945, the house was taken over by the East German state and saw many uses, including a school and a post office. Today, the Schloss is being renovated by collector and art dealer Martin Kunitz. I've been always interested in, in history. I collect all my life. Uh, I started as a child old furniture, old books. I 
always liked old houses, big houses, and I always need money. I have always a lot of work here, and it's full of furniture, and it's like Ikea, I say. Uh, I say to the guests, uh, ask me for the price, and you can buy it. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> we're coming to have a look around your slosh. Hello. Schloss? Schloss. 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 Yeah. Schloss. yeah. Uh, Schloss. Can we yeah. come in? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. OK, so this is your restoration project. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is lovely. This is great. Uh, yeah, so this is the original uh, decoration this is, from This 18... is the, the, the last rest of uh, socialist time. It comes from the 50s. Oh, right, OK. And here is the word Einheit that means unity. Was this in it's... Eastern Germany? Was this Eastern yes. Germany then? Yeah. 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 It's nice, um, good looking, isn't it? Yeah. OK, so obviously we're here to buy things. So what's for sale? It's... Oh, for sale. Everything's for sale. Yeah. <laughs> Going to need a bigger beetle. So yeah. you, you can choose, yeah. <laughs> Should we start in here? Yes. As you want. This building was trapped behind the Berlin Wall for decades, and it was sort of commandeered by the powers that be. But what's happening now, these places are coming back into private ownership and are being restored. Luckily, from what I can see, most of this is original, so they just left it alone. A bit of a blessing. So art is your thing, isn't it? Art's your... Yes. OK. That's interesting, isn't it? I like it because of, of this. Most bookcases would have had them. Ah, it's okay. to stop dust going onto the top, onto the books. Yeah, That's yeah. What it's for. I've so never you, seen it before. I've never seen it on hinges. Yeah, yeah. Before. It's very much in an English taste. Really stylish. Great color. Great size. Not too big. Not too small. Not too deep. Not too wide. It's got everything going for it. This barley twist mahogany bookcase is highly original and unusually has fully intact hinged dust protectors. Dating to around 1860, it could be worth up to £3,500. How much is this? Um, 2,500. 2, OK. A little bit. Oh. A little bit too pricey. Mm. Um, 2,000 would be great. Mm, that's no, I, I leave it for for my books. I love it. No, 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 uh, no. We have maybe, to do it. No, you've said it's for sale now, so we're good enough to do a deal. <laughs> no, no, maybe. no, no. You're not getting out of it that easy. Two thousand five hundred is too much for a you. A little. I'm trying to just save some money, do uh, a deal, okay, just help. Okay, that's okay. all. I just wanted yeah. you to help me a little. Okay, so um, that's all. Ten, ten percent. Ten percent off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sold. Okay. I'll take it. Okay. Thank you. Much appreciated. You're welcome. It's wearing its years well, but it's not had a hard life. Do you know all those dust covers on all of the shelves? They're all perfect. There's nothing missing. Honestly, if I had the room, I'd keep it. It's that nice. This young lady is interesting. Can you tell me something about it? Next thing I see, and it's right next to the beautiful bookcase, is a really striking oil on canvas of a young lady looking right at you. The frame is uh, also in a very good condition. It's in amazing condition, really, yeah. considering it's an original yeah. frame. Can you? Yeah. Do you mind? Thank you. She's got quite a sort of stern gaze. She's sort of looking at it as if to go, come on. It's just a, a remarkably beautiful piece in incredible condition. How much is she? You can have it for the half price. 1,200 is on, on the back. You can have it for 600. Really? Uh, 600 fix, fix, yeah. Sold. OK. Yeah, it's, I, I really like it. 600 euros. And I'm thinking, well, actually, I'll pay a 1,000. Happy days. Yes, we are having that. Beautiful thing. Yeah, here's my library. I am here since four weeks, so uh, the stuff is still... It looks like my office Yeah. after yeah. seven years, yeah. so I wouldn't worry. Uh, it's OK. Yeah. There was three... Mm -hmm. African things mm -hmm. that I like the look of. This one. Mm -hmm. This one. And then there was the one in the other room. I have there two, two more. I keep spotting around the house these little carved African masks. Headgear, I think they are. And um, it's something I know very little about, but 
I like them. That one's my favourite, I think. 150, 150, um, 180. What about the one in the other room, the hat one? Should I bring it? Yeah, please. Well, you could put that one next to that one. It could almost be the front of the van. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Say something about Georgian houses. <laughs> this one I really like. Yeah, yeah, this oh, yeah. is uh, 250. This is the one I would probably keep. I just see them all on a wall together and it gives me something to nerd out and learn about, which I really like doing that. For centuries, traditional African masks were worn as part of ceremonial rituals to connect with the spirit world. And the sophisticated abstraction of masks like these inspired many early 20th century artists including Modigliani, Matisse, and Picasso. Made of wood and around 100 years old, this collection could be worth 1,250 pounds. Together, 600. For everything? Yes. Yes. Deal. OK. Yeah, thank you. Good. All right. Yeah, okay. God, I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, yeah, we bought some unusual things. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah it's a good yeah. day, a good day. Yeah, so a day with Herr Kunitz in Schloss Bucher um, been very rewarding, fun. The best buy today was a tricky... Yes. What a massive house. A lot of work <laughs> taken on. Is your house like that? No. My house is in that condition, but, but uh, it's not that size. I don't have a schloss. I've got a schlur. My squirrel's having problems. He's having trouble. After a memorable week on the Autobahn, covering more than 400 kilometres in a squeaky old beetle, is the end of the boys' East German adventure. Right, well, that was a very successful trip, I think. It was. Berlin, when we went to the market there, I think that's probably got some of the most interesting things I bought. The day in the Schloss, the bookcase and the painting and the African figures there, really good buys. And then the, the Japanese mask, I think that's the sort of thing I could, I could live with for a long time. Would you get up at half past two in the morning to find another one of those? Yes, I would. It's been a it's been a great trip. I've yes. really enjoyed I've it. Enjoyed and now it. I need to go back to Wales uh -huh. and diet. A lot. A lot. Cheers. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Like it. You're asking 380. What can you do? 350. 350. That's I'm going to have to. Limit. I'm going to have to buy him. I think he's wonderful. 380 wanted. Bought for 350. 
well, there's a mountain, there's a way for that to go with a, a better mount on it. It's a wonderful thing. Love it. Thank you very much. That's by the day. That's that 1%, that's that magic. And this, this proves my own point right, which is, you know, we're finished for the day. We've been here hours and hours and hours, ready to go home, bang, right there in front of you. Leipzig Market, massive, very early in the morning. We've done all right. We've made money, we've made a couple of contacts, we've bought some interesting things. We've gone from secessionist lighting and furniture through to teaching aids for engines to Japanese art. Fine, it's been worth it. And I've done another market I've not done before. Can I go back to bed now? After a good sleep, the boys are back on the road to their final destination, just 25 miles outside Leipzig. Today, T, we are off to meet a guy called Martin, and he owns a schloss. It's full of stuff to sell, so I am very excited about this one. Uh, he is one of the three largest print dealers in Germany. The good news is the schloss is not in good nick. Uh, it's knackered. If he gets a bad builder in, he could have a botch and slosh and... Slosh and botch, aren't they those expensive stereos? <laughs> They're heading to Bad Lausick, an ancient town with roots that go back to the 11th century. The town became a popular health resort in the 19th century after a hot spring was discovered during coal mining operations. Located a few kilometers to the west, the 1,000 square meter stately home, Schloss Beuker, was built around 1810 by Heinrich von Niebecker. After 1945, the house was taken over by the East German state and saw many uses, including a school and a post office. Today, the Schloss is being renovated by collector and art dealer, Martin Kunitz. I've been always interested in, in history. I collect all my life. Uh, I started as a child old furniture, old books. I always liked old houses, big houses, and I always need money. I have always a lot of work here, and it's full of furniture, and it's like Ikea, I say. Uh, I say to the guests, uh, ask me for the price, and you can buy it. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> we're coming to have a look around your Schloss. Hello. Schloss. 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 Yeah. yeah. Schloss. yeah. Uh, Schloss. Can we yeah. come in? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. OK, so this is your restoration project. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is lovely. This is great. Uh, yeah, so this is the original uh, decoration is, from This 18... is the, the, the last rest of uh, socialist time. It comes from the 50s. Oh, right, OK. And here is the word Einheit that means unity. Was this it's... in Eastern Germany? Was this Eastern yes. Germany then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's nice, um, good-looking, isn't it? Yeah. OK, so obviously we're here to buy things. So what's for sale? It's... Oh, for sale. Everything's for sale. Yeah. <laughs> Going to need a bigger beetle. So yeah. you, you can choose, yeah. <laughs> Should we start in here? Yes. As you want. This building was trapped behind the Berlin Wall for decades, and it was sort of commandeered by the powers that be. But what's happening now, these places are coming back into private ownership and are being restored. Luckily, from what I can see, most of this is original, so they just left it alone. A bit of a blessing. So, art is your thing, isn't it? Art's your... Yes. OK. That's interesting, isn't it? I like it because of, of this. Most bookcases would have had them. Ah, it's okay. to stop dust going onto the top, onto the books. Yeah, That's yeah. What it's for. I've it's never new... seen it before. I've never seen it on hinges. Yeah, yeah. Before. It's very much in an English taste. Really stylish. Great color. Great size. Not too big. Not too small. Not too deep. Not too wide. It's got everything going for it. This barley twist mahogany bookcase is highly original and unusually has fully intact hinged dust protectors. Dating to around 1860, it could be worth up to £3,500. How much is this? Uh, £2,500. £2,500, okay. A little bit, uh, a little bit too pricey. 
Interesting. Can you tell me something about it? Next thing I see, and it's right next to the beautiful bookcase, is a really striking oil-on canvas of a young lady looking right at you. The frame is uh, also in a very good condition. It's in amazing condition, really, yeah. considering it's an original yeah. frame. Can you? Yeah. Do you mind? Thank you. She's got quite a sort of stern gaze. She's sort of looking at it as if to go, come on. It's just a, a remarkably beautiful piece in incredible condition. How much is she? You can have it for the half price. 1,200 is on, on the back. But you can have it for 600. Really? Uh, 600 fix, fix, yeah. Sold. OK. Yeah, it's, I, I really like it. 600 euros. And I'm thinking, well, actually, I'll pay 1,000. Happy days. Yes, we are having that. Beautiful thing. Yeah, here's my library. I am here since four weeks, so uh, the stuff is still... It looks like my office. Yeah. After yeah. seven years, yeah. so I wouldn't worry. Uh, it's OK. Yeah. There's three mm -hmm. African things mm -hmm. that I like the look of. This one. Mm -hmm. This one. And then there was the one in the other room. I have there two, two more. I keep spotting around the house these little carved African masks. Headgear, I think they are. And um, it's something I know very little about, but I like them. That one's my favourite, I think. 150, 150, um, 180. What about the one in the other room, the hat one? Should I bring it? Yeah, please. Well, you could put that one next to that one. It could almost be the front of the van. <laughs> Together, 600. For everything? Yes. Yes. Deal. OK. Yeah, thank you. Good. All right. Yeah, okay. God, I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, yeah, we bought some unusual things. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah it's a good yeah. day. Okay.
What a nice man. Yes. What a massive house. A lot of work <laughs> taken on. Is your house like that? No. My house is in that condition, but, but uh, it's not that size. I don't have a schloss. I've got a schlur. My squirrel's having problems. He's having trouble. After a memorable week on the Autobahn, covering more than 400 kilometres in a squeaky old beetle, is the end of the boys' East German adventure. All right, well, that was a very successful trip, I think. It was. Berlin, when we went to the market there, I think that's probably got some of the most interesting things I bought. The day in the Schloss, the bookcase and the painting and the African figures there. Really good buys. And then the, the Japanese mask. I think that's the sort of thing I could, I could live with for a long time. Would you get up at half past two in the morning to find another one of those? Yes, I would. It's been a, been a great trip. I've yes. really enjoyed I it. And now it. I need to go back to Wales uh -huh. and diet. A lot. A lot. Cheers. Thank you. Well done. <laughs>